ever try to plan a cookout for 30,000 people all in one day? If you have, then you know what it's like to work one of the most challenging jobs anywhere. Welcome to the Varsity Kitchen. This is the uh, heart of the operation right here. This is the hot dog and hamburger hole, is what we call it. It's been called that for probably 50 years or so, and been in this general location. Um, this is where all the hot dogs and hamburgers are made, and um, that's where Irby Walker used to work in the number one register. And on a busy football day, we'll have three people making hot dogs. The hamburger station has a meat cooker and somebody making the hamburgers. This is the belt backer. He catches everything that comes down the belt, makes sure it's right, and sets it up for the cashiers and the people packaging the food. And on busy days, I remember when I started working at the varsity, these positions were some of my first positions, working all day right here, making hot dogs and hamburgers. And Irby, he would be screaming at me for his food, just like he screams, or would scream at anybody else. Turn on it up. It was just, it's just wild and crazy back here on busy days. Back in the, before we remodeled, a lot of Atlantans probably remember coming down the steps over here, and this was open. And I remember working on that back stove, and but we get busloads of kids, kind of like we have right now, and they'd come line up on these steps and look over, and they could watch us making the hot dogs and hamburgers. If you've eaten at the varsity, it's probably a really good chance that your food came from this uh, station right here. One of the favorite things of customers when they come to the varsity is our ice. And um, our ice is really special. Um, it's a special ice machine that actually has water running around the stainless steel drum and the water freezes to the ice machine and it has a roller, a big cutter, about this wide, it actually shaves the ice off the drum once it uh, melts and it's continuously falling in this big uh, uh, storage bin we have here. It just makes the coat, to me, it makes it perfect because that thin ice and you get it in your mouth and you chew it and it's, um, or over the chocolate milk, pouring the chocolate milk over the ice, it's just awesome. And you know, when this ice machine tears up, when it breaks down, and we have to buy ice, the regular chunked ice, oh my gosh, the complaints that we get on those days, because people love the shaved ice. This is the main onion ring and french fry station. When I finally was able to leave, the hot dogs and hamburgers and come over here and learn onion rings. I just fell in love with it. I love cooking onion rings for some reason. I, I can't explain why. It's just action. And you can see that it's, it's motion all day from getting the onions, putting the batter on them, drop them in, in the fryers. and It's just, it's a great job. You gotta have strong arms. And the fry station down here. And this is, uh, is always busy. I mean, it's almost two o'clock today you can see they're still still really busy and um, they go through a lot of product a lot you know 2,000 pounds of onions and potatoes and countless I don't even came take the countless gallons of onion batter that we make fresh every day here onion rings my favorite job at the bar Being in a family business like we are and having a legacy of just my grandfather and starting something so important to Atlanta, we haven't changed hardly anything. And part of that is out of fear. You got a great thing here and people love it and you don't want to mess with something that it's been so successful. 
But one thing that we have changed, and it was probably like in 1983, long before a lot of the other fast food restaurants made this change, is we changed to canola uh, cooking oil. Um, no trans fat and cholesterol. And the ironic thing is, back in 83, we didn't make that change just for health um, reasons, per se. Basically, it was a great operational change. It was much easier to pour oil that was liquid into our fryer since we have 20 fryers. At the Varsity downtown, my grandfather set a tradition of fresh product. And um, French fries and onion rings were, were one of the items at the top of the list. Our customers appreciate that fresh product because um, if you ever tried to put a frozen french fry at Varsity and they came in and got that, got something like that, we would hear about it immediately. We are what we are. We're hot dogs, hamburgers, french fries, and onion rings, but the fresh side of that equation, bringing things in fresh, using a healthy cooking oil, you know, that that is different than what you get at other restaurants. When people come to the varsity, they're coming from out of town. Um, it might be their once a year trip to the varsity. And the worst thing in the world for us and for them is for them to come in town, come into Atlanta, and come in here and order a particular item and for us to say we're out. That just can't happen. One of the reasons why we don't run out is because we keep records on what we're going to do for every day. Just like these books here tell us our sales per register and we compare each year and the activities and events that are in town. We compare usage of all the uh, produce, hot dogs, hamburgers, all the items and just to make sure that we're not going to run out. I can predict how much, approximately how much we'll sell for the day. We compare the Red Book every year. We keep the last year Red Book. The sales for that particular day, we don't go by date, but we go by the day. Also, at the end of the day, we had to write how the day was, whether there was a problem, no problem. We have enough employees. We had to document that and, and so we can compare it to last year. If the sales was less this year or more, we say, what was it and what was the problem? Did you have enough help or not? Those are some of the things that go in the Red Book. So that has been a tradition for all these years. I'm having number one. I need a number one onion ring surprise, sir. Fry the ring, fry the onion ring. What's your life think? Coke, Dad, Coke, Lamar, Jones, and Peter, Frost, and Orange, sir. Water. I need an ice water. The varsity uh, has in its possession um, dozens of volumes that contain entries by the employees that describe minute details of what went on in that restaurant uh, on North Avenue on a day-to-day -day basis. January 16th, went to war with Iraq at 6.30 p.m. A lot of customers in TV rooms. Friday, March 14th, tornado strike at the Dome. SEC championship, two buses steady till 1.30 p.m., good help, Rainy afternoon. October 14th, Braves today at 3 o'clock. Last game of the series here. 74 degrees, clear sky. Good day for the Tomahawk. From day one, Mr. Gordy has kept detailed records of the varsity sales, activities, events going on in the city of Atlanta, what the weather was like that day, how the staffing was here. And the net effect of that is you have an 80-year history of the city of Atlanta right here in these diaries. The Olympics was one of our most exciting times here at the Varsity. We had a pin design, and this is the pin that caused all the commotion. Chuck Williams' son designed this pin. It was based on our onion rings in a walking box with a Coke. They were not intersecting, they were just onion rings. Well, ACOG did not see it that way. They thought it infringed on their um, Olympic rings, and they came in and confiscated our pins. So 
from there, that's what caused this pin to be so popular. It was the pin of the Olympics. Everyone wanted this pin. Thomas Edison, the Wright brothers, Henry Ford, tinkers and dreamers, one and all. To this league of inventors, some would add Frank Gordy. Exhibit A, this amazing pie-making machine of his. Designed over 50 years ago, it still crafts about 5,000 homemade peach or apple pies in a matter of hours. I let them cool out five minutes. Pie making at the Varsity begins with making the dough and fillings with recipes unchanged in 80 years. The process of creating the pies themselves takes six people working Frank's machine. While the entire process takes about two hours, we have sped things up a little. The way we get things done at the Varsity is so unique, even to our utensils, how we have, and I can't give away the secret, but the spatula that we use to throw the chili on the hot dog. I don't know where it came from, but it is the most unique invention to get the chili on the hot dog. We have to make them custom ourselves. We buy this certain kind of spatula and we take them down in the basement and we modify them to make the hot dogs. The spoon that we use to throw, actually throw the mustard and make that stripe on the hot dog, where it came from, I don't know, but it really is ingenious because it's a part of a spatula handle with a teaspoon welded to that handle that has been modified to be able to throw the mustard on the hot dog just right. And we have all these little things like that around the varsity that are so important to our business. And, you know, I don't know where they came from, but whoever thought of them, and I like to think my grandfather and Mr. Menix and Mr. Suddeth were the ones that you know, came up, and I'm sure they were, the ones that came up with these neat tools and ideas, the bread warmers that we use to steam our bread, that's custom made. Um, the hot dog pans, our hot dog pans are just in any pan that you can buy at a uh, restaurant supply house. I mean, they are custom made, they have to be the certain thickness of stainless steel. The tops of them have to be folded a certain way because they're on that heat all day long, boiling hot dogs and they have to hold up. My grandfather put a conveyor belt in the varsity, and I've worked the conveyor belt many, many hours making hot dogs and hamburgers, and there's no faster way to get that food down the line. We used to have a belt. We used to roll down, and uh, you put the food on it, and it, it would come down, and you had to grab it for it to turn over. Just like a assembly line like a hot dog assembly line. We had somebody standing there, and you had the curry boys too, so we had to wait on the front counter and the counter behind you. So we had a belt man, and he was uh, helping, you know, catch the belt. So both of us together was done it together. They just making hot dogs. You had to, you know, pick out your order, because they were just coming down the belt, and all of them was mixed in there together. It was something like a basketball, backyard basketball game, free for all. You grab. <laughs> Well, the story of the conveyor belt, I think, goes back to the days when he was packing peaches. And he was actually working a conveyor belt packing peaches. And it made the process, I guess, go a whole lot faster. So then when he was in the position of having to get hot dogs across that counter, and how do you get it from, you have, you know, three guys making hot dogs at the same time, how do you get them up to the counter to sell them? I think his mind went back to those peach, that peach packing days of his. I mean, it's, it's really amazing the thought and ingenuity that has gone into um, putting all of these small things together to be able to serve 30,000 people on a day. What do you have? What do you have? I need one spot. Oh! Before the day of the cash register, there were holes cut in the stainless steel and we had mayonnaise jars under that, and the money was just raked in, because this was to speed the, the service up for the customer. It just would rake